Hello! This video takes a look at Atlantis Reverb, an effect designed for long reverb tails and rich textures. Atlantis works by spectral analysis and resynthesis. It's a similar idea to how the venerable pull stretch algorithm works. If you want any more details, just ask me on the Reaper JSFX forum. I'm always happy to talk about algorithms. So let's take a look at the interface. We'll start with just a mellow piano sound. Now let's add an Atlantis with just the default settings. Some of the controls here should be familiar. Dry and wet controls, and this dial controls the decay period. Let's turn up the period and listen again. This grain dial down here is worth a bit of explaining. Atlantis uses overlapping chunks of audio, and because of how the Fourier transform works, shorter chunks means less accurate frequencies. This is fine for short release tails or atonal sounds like percussion, but for long reverb on tuned instruments it can sound indistinct or slightly garbled. With longer chunks, it's not as immediately responsive to percussive sounds, because chunks take longer to fade in or out, but you can get a much purer sound for sustained tones. For some instruments, this can sound a bit too static, and we miss out on some of the rich evolving tone, so have a play around. For ambient piano, I quite like it around 300 milliseconds. There's also a detuning section, which we'll get to in a bit. But now, let's take a look at the damping controls over here, which let you control some of the timbre. It's not a straight up high pass or low pass. Frequencies outside these limits are still present, they just fade away faster, as determined by this damping factor here. This does mean that if your reverb tails are super long, the lower or higher frequencies will still hang on for a bit as well. So if you really want a sharp cutoff, you can turn this all the way up. Now's as good a time as any to mention this big spectrum display in the center. The fast moving yellow line is the spectrum of the input, so it disappears as the input does. The slower moving orange line is the current reverberation spectrum. The yellow input spectrum is constantly being added to this reverberation spectrum, which then decays over time. You can hopefully see how our damping factor means higher and lower frequencies decayed extremely fast, and we're just left with a narrow band of reverberation. Next, let's look at this shimmer section over here. Shimmer shifts the reverberation spectrum up by octaves, and mixes it back in with the original. Currently, the rate is set to zero, but if we turn it up, then we get a bright swell as the reverberation is shifted up more and more over time. For very long tails, this can end up with lots of energy in some high frequencies, many octaves above the original note. If you don't want this, you can use the damping section, but you can also use this fifth style which shifts up by octave and a fifth as well, instead of just octaves. At its maximum setting, this makes the shimmer more complex but less harmonically consistent, so you can experiment to find a good middle ground. Next, let's go back to this detuning section. This is fairly straightforward. Over time, the reverberation is detuned. You might notice some of the nice clean peaks in the reverberation spectrum become smoother over time as the energy spreads out into surrounding frequencies. Ordinarily, this detuning happens symmetrically, but with the shift dial, the detuning can be biased one way or the other, so the reverb tail shifts up or down over time. <laughs> 
Just a couple more details to look at, like these release controls up here. Sometimes, particularly when you have a super long reverb tail, previous chords can start to interfere with other ones. So as you can hear, in this example, the chords become a little muddled. So, we'll use this release button here. This moves all the existing energy from the reverberation spectrum to a faster decaying release spectrum, which appears as a white line on the display. Fine, but the reverb tail disappears a bit too obviously here, so I'm going to increase the decay period of the release spectrum to make it a bit more subtle. You can automate this release control. You can see the parameter in this list, release mode. Alternatively, you can link this release to the sustain pedal, MIDI controller 64, which we conveniently have in our MIDI input. We should see the release button light up as it's controlled by the sustain pedal. Finally, let's look at this input comp section. This isn't a full featured compressor, but it can be used to suppress peaks in the input, which would otherwise dominate the reverb too much. You can see the current input level and reduction amount in this display here. The dry signal is unaffected by this compressor, as is the reverb tail itself, it's applied to the input as it's fed into the reverberation spectrum. So that's Atlantis Reverb, I hope you have fun and make some great sounds with it. <laughs>